well, I guess Razor is an option, but it also doesn't seem too great. I guess they could go for the for the OD, even if it does feel kind of bad picking it into Nyx. What, Dusa? Oh, you did call it in the last second, the Medusa. So, uh, might be our last game, might not be. We might have the full best of five as Navi are going to win this. Who's your money on? I feel like VP has the better draft in this game. Yeah, it's, yeah you're, you're becoming a VP fanboy. I, I did accuse you of rooting for Navi, but it looks like you've, uh, you've switched out your allegiances now. Every time my favorite team, you call me a fanboy. Come on, man. I'm a Dota fanboy. Guilty. I, I mean, the, the real issue is we're meant to be as unbiased as possible, aren't we? That, that's... I mean, if I was biased, I would be rooting uh, for VP because they banned the Naga. I, I mean, you did say you were rooting for VP. Those were your exact words. True, but not for that reason. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, honestly, I think I do have to agree with you. They see they've answered the jug pretty pretty well with the Sven and the Beastmaster. But uh, this Medusa, if they're if Navi aren't able to steamroll this game, I think no one will be able to carry VP to victory as well. One thing I am a little bit worried about for VP um, is that all of their heroes kind of rely on items. If they do get behind on VP and Navi has a good early laning stage. They can't really kill anyone, because in the mid game they're really gonna rely on Roger getting these crucial echo slams, but if he gets like a 20 minute blink and both the Jug as well as the Dusa are behind, how are you gonna kill anything with the Disrupt uh, Mage's Prophet? Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's really pretty true there. But so, Koma and Dota knowledge would say that Navi has a better draft because they have more stuns. The but, begins. I mean, we, we saw in the last game, stuns were not everything. They had more stuns there. They weren't able to win. And Bounty Runes rise. It's going to be a two for two trade. But they did force the spin out from Ramses, which is pretty nice early because it takes a fair chunk of mana as well as having it on cooldown. Yeah, and Ramses is one of those players who doesn't really like getting mangoes early. So he's going to struggle a little bit with mana. Only has one spin remaining. Yeah, so this bottom lane, I, I, yeah, they did use the Fisher blocks, so that's going to be a nice touch of lane control here for the side of VP. Crystallize, obviously, very good blocks, so it's not as bad as it might be. But still, this uh, bottom lane, a tiny bit more advantageous for VP, at least early on. But, oh, Roger, maybe overextending a bit, eats the <laughs> Illuminate, but it doesn't really matter. Able to walk away, but on very low health, that has to eat through a whole bunch of his tangos. Oh, and this spam is just so annoying here from Seneko. And um, actually, once Crystallize gets a few points in the Great Cleave, isn't this pretty good versus the Treants? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's why Sven is one of the better matchups against Prophet. And because they have an Earth Shaker as well, they're gonna have a lot of trouble really pressuring this Sven. Because if they had a stronger hero in this dual lane, they might have been able to push him out of lane, but a Coddle Sven is just going to destroy Prophet Earthshaker. And we see a whole bunch of tips coming in for Solo. I'm not quite sure what happened. Oh, he found the Hawk. <laughs> he unblocked the camp and found the Hawk. That's why he deserves tipping. Ah, so very nice play by Blizzy, blocking it with the Hawk and making Solo waste the sentry on that one. And once again, he's sending it in, just making sure that it doesn't spawn. And he's just going to keep doing this every single minute. So this is a very nice play that you can do as a Beastmaster. Yeah, th this mid lane magical does have a bit more CS, but no one has the denies. And there's no mana remaining on this Ember Spirit. So uh, after this last Flame Guard, this lane is going to be a lot tougher for him. No. Yep, and no one is just gonna keep clicking away. And now he finds an illusion rune as well. And for a ranged hero at this stage, that's pretty much a double damage with more utility. Yeah, it's and magical seasons to agree with you. The tips they're flying flying uh, fast and furiously here. I think that was because no one stepped back for a moment and made magical use his slide of fist before he had the illusions. Oh, okay, well. Either way, a whole bunch of nice tips while Ramsey's spinning on top of Blizzy. 
But uh, he, it seems like he was spinning to try and kill off the ball. But Blizzy gets the deny on his own summoned creature. And this is a pretty good matchup for Jug. It used to be really bad for him. Because he had no way to uh, to escape when the Boy Slow got on onto him. But these days, Boy Slow doesn't go through magic immunity anymore. So it's a really nice matchup for Jug. Yeah, Zyx just trying to harass Solo into the trees over here. And Sonoko walking away from Roger, CPing back to lane is Pasha. He must have got very low. I'm not quite sure how. Big spin coming out on Blizzy. Yeah, they have the kinetic field. He's taking the Thunder Strike. One more pop. It's going to make him lose his Al, but does allow him to live through. Oh, I guess he has to go back for the Walk of Shame, though. And is that oh, worth it? Oh. Just because it's first blood? Yeah, I think so. It sucks, but you don't really have another choice. Actually, with his tangos, he feels strong enough to remain in this lane. Speaking about Walks of Shame, look at Magical. He's just going back to base right now. Refilling his bottle, feeling like he can't stay in this lane without mana. And he doesn't want to waste all of his mana on consume. Ah. I mean, money on consumables. Yeah, it's, it's, but even if he had any money, he's not doing so hot in the CS. And Roger, with this Arcane Rune, maybe we might see First Blood here in this bottom lane. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen much more action here because they do have a level 2 Stormhammer into an Illuminate, which is a ton of potential damage. Ramsey's he's forced to use his spin defensively instead of aggressively, as you would like, but he eats, eats the tree, I think, given to him by Solo. <coughs> oh, sorry it's about Solo that. paying back the fact that Ramses picked him Disruptor. He's like, all right, have a tree. Avatry. <laughs> so no one, he's having a great time here in this mid lane. Magical, he has got a bit more mana now on him. And with that sleight of fist, he is able to dodge the snake. So that's very nice. Didn't quite manage this time. But Magical should have a decent time now that he has a bottle and some points up in flame guide. We see him put three points in and I suspect this is just because he wants to jungle as much as he can. The duration on lower levels of flame guide is kind of mediocre. So it makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, both him and Soneko, they share the shrine together. But Dan over onto Pasha. Chris Lines, he's not level six, so he definitely doesn't have the burst. But it is certainly a, a lot of harass onto a nature's prophet. Yeah, and it's gonna get harder and harder for Prophet, so just TP space, buy some boots. You have to be super careful on Prophet to not feed away too many trains. Because they are your primary way to control the lane, but at the same time, they give quite a bit of gold. Yeah. Magical, he's taking so much just regular right click here from no one with the help of that split shot. This, uh, so I do like what you said about him going for that flame guard. Because he definitely does need to recover somewhere. And he also gets very unlucky with this rune. I feel like Magical has been pretty unlucky with runes for this entire series. It feels like every time he committed to walking towards one rune, it always spawned on the other side. Poor Magical. I mean, this is why you don't commit towards a rune and you say supports control both runes for me. Yeah, I guess so. Bottom tower. But he has successfully got his level 6, so he shouldn't go down uh, without a fight at least. He'll have his fire remnants to be able to escape anything. Ooh. Pasha getting very low in this bottom lane. He does have sticks though, so he should be fine. It's a little bit spooky though. And, and he does sprout up crystallize, but it's early on, so he definitely has the Quelling Blade. That sprout not effective against those. And Crystallize just casually eats a Tango, and he's gonna get double the value. So he's like, thanks, bro. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's, I, I, I forgot about that low. change. Lizzy, he hasn't hit level 6, and he's not that close to it. But uh, talking of level 6 is Ramsey's. He will have his Omni Slash, but as long as Blizzy and sticks right close to the creeps, he won't be in any danger. Even if he doesn't, Omni Slash level 1 is just pitiful when a Jack just has phase boots like 400 physical damage or something like that so this should be fine uh, and these lanes we're, al we're already seven minutes in and i'm so surprised we haven't seen any sort of first blood Ramsey. i thought we were casting cis dota but i guess we were wrong 
I, I mean, uh, in a few of the games, we have had, you know, out and out aggression. But it just looks like they know the minor is on... Not the minor, what am I saying? The major's on the line here. So both sides taking it very seriously and playing it very safe. I guess you need to go to SEA Dota to see true caveman Dota. Because after a Naga game, that's kind of what all of us want, right? We just want to see like 20 kills in 10 minutes. We want to see crazy outplays, not crazy creep hitting. Yeah, Zayax, uh, he might ha be able to get first blood here on solo. They have the slow with the help of the board, but Blizzy, he's actually held inside. Ramses, is he going to be able to turn this round with the spin, the spike carapace? It doesn't really matter. Zayax like, trying to walk away, but Ramses, he does have the Omni Slash here. They have Pasha as well, and I think Zayax will be first blood. The Impale, has, but he's able to get it on the Disruptor. Uses the Raw to be able to try and get away, but the body blocks from the creeps. The Ramses is able to get two, but Zayax, before he went down, he got first blood. Yeah, very nice play by Zayat, but ultimately, probably still worth it for VP. They get a kill on their jug, um, and they just get two kills in general, so it's a two for one. This lies popping in salty to try and take VP stacks, but VP has vision. They're taking in a ton yeah. of heroes. Uh, they don't have glimpse because it was used earlier, uh, so Solo, he's not going to be able to use it. And they're actually going to turn this round into a... Done. The Fisher block, it stopped them from being able to save their Disruptor. That's a whoops. And Oh, Pasha, uh, he TP's like... into this. But Chris Lice, he has God Strength as well as a Quelling Blade. So this pursuit, it's not going to result in a kill. Right, that was a little bit unfortunate for VP. Losing half of their stack and their Disruptor. After committing three heroes to try and defend it. Yeah, it's Very cool play by Navi as well, just turning around, casually taking down VP's position 5 and walking away. Yeah, and now Blizzy's threatening the tower while Zyax goes for the pull. I really like this because the Beastmaster is able to apply the pressure, and this should allow the next assassin to get way closer to his level 6. Meanwhile, Rams is TP bot as well, so it looks like VP is going to try to take down this tier 1 hero for Navi. Top tower. Yeah, magical. Farming up this creep wave and the stacks. They really want to help this Ember Spirit Dyer's have a good game for the side of Navi. Just because it's so important. Bottom tower is under attack. Looks like Crystallize opting not to go for a Midas this game. And I do really like that. Because you don't want to go late game against a Prophet Medusa. No, thank you. Yeah, he was... But apparently he was happy to do it versus Naga Siren. Ramses, he's gone for the spin, but not the spin TP. And Zayat connects with a great impale there. They have the follow-up sun, but even if they had anything, there's no blade fury. The illuminate doesn't matter, but the Willow is surely does. They pop the god check. Ramses able to walk away. No, they're the follow-up impale, and they are able to get that kill on the carry for VP. That looked a little bit finicky, but ultimately very nice, uh, nice done by Zayat. They get the glimpse onto Blizzy. He's caught inside the kinetic field. They have four people here, so he will eventually go down. He realizes he can try and turn on Solo, but it doesn't matter. It was a really nice play there. I, I don't know if you realize, but Pasha, he used the sprout just to give vision for the glimpse. Very nicely done by Pasha for a shot. Let's see, Roger is already at a thousand gold, so I wouldn't be surprised for it to be a 20 minute blink dagger. Something like 14, 15 seems more likely. And that's oh, very Magical's aggression over here in the jungle is being punished. Solo hits level 6 and they have the rest of them. Magical, what was he doing? He thought he'd get the solo kill onto Solo, but no, no, no. Solo being level 6 is such a big deal at this point. Yeah, I mean, he just wasn't expecting the Static Storm and with the rest of the heroes there from VP. An easy kill. Just that over-aggression, that's not what you want to be doing on an Ember Spirit, especially when you started off behind. So we've seen a lot of different builds on uh, Nature's Prophets. We've seen Urns, we've seen Midas's, we've seen Spirit Vessel Rushes, but it looks like uh, Pasha is going to favor the Solar Crest here. And I generally do like to see one hero on either team go for something like a medallion or a solar crest just because it gives that Roche potential. And I do feel like that's going to be very nice for a VP. Oh, under attack. He has the impale over here. They need to follow up some the god strength. And I don't think you'll be able to TP away from this. They're able to eat through the cheese. And now he can just cleave off them. Needs one more hit. Pasha living on 20 HP. Crystallized now, but... Magical, he rotates in, and I think Solo is going to be food as well. 
Ramses, he does have the Omni Slash. Magical able to get a nice 75 gold off the Heaney World. And they seem to be pursuing for this. The Size Fist and Steering Chains. It's on top of no one. He does have the Stone Gaze if he wants to pop it. And he might feel forced to. So he does use it to stop the side of Navi chasing for more. Really nice turnaround there. Of invisibility. Yeah, that's exactly what Navi needs to do. Just try to get these pickles with the Nyx and take it from there. Don't give too much space for this VP quest to farm. Because if you let a Prophet do a jump free farm, you're gonna have a bad time. And at the same time, we spoke about Roger now up to 1850 gold. Oh, they found Ramses. Zyax is affected by the Thunder Strike, so you're not quite able to get the glimpse. He's gone into his Vendetta form. But it looks like there's no real kill potential. So Neko, he needs to be able to... Running away from this. There's... Routing in front of him. There's Pasha. He actually blocks off both of them. And it looks like Soneko might be the one to go down. Pops the Ignis fastest to try and escape. But he's glimpsed back. But they actually have the rest of their team here. They have lost it. But there's Static Storm. The stun Crystal just needs a teeny bit more damage. And they have lost Ramses. Now with the Spike Carapace on top of Solo. They're going to lose him as well. Pasha is teeping up. But they have the roar from the low ground. So it looks like Pasha is definitely going to go down. But is Solo able to escape? Yes, he is. What a beautiful... Oh, no, I take back now. everything I said about Solo being able to escape. They have the slice of fist searing chains, but the chains they miss. He does have slide of fist again. He isn't going to be greedy. Or is he? Magical? Uh, he'll have vision of Solo. It, uh, oh, no, he just walked past where it wasn't there. He didn't have the vision for him. Otherwise, I think he might have turned. He was just very afraid of the glimpse, and rightfully so. He didn't really have the mana to get out if he did get glimpsed. Yeah, but now with this regen room bottled, he's going to have a go at Pasha. But they brought in Ramses. Magical, he does have a remnant down. No, he doesn't. He, do he does have a remnant down. I take it back. So he will be able to get away to safety if this Juggernaut tries to Omni Slash him. Yeah, he can be super aggressive as long as the Shaker and Disruptor aren't there. Now. Speaking about Shaker, still very close to his dagger, but still not quite there. Yeah, 15 minute mark, they get the stun. Zyx, he already has this Meteor Hammer, so they have the chain stun, but it looks like the spin came out just in time. Once again, the stun connects a little bit too close to the hero itself, so it's very hard to get off the Meteor Hammer. So is it's it... a very nice timing. Uh, so is it a perfect chain stun if it's on the very end of the Impale? Yes. Okay. The further you are away, the better it connects. They could try to go for no one here, but he senses something is up. It's yeah. gonna be very risky to run uphill here. They have the blink tag on Crystallize, so they go for it. He pops the stone gaze, so, but they are behind him. They turn to stone, they have the will on top of it. Round DC is spinning away. More to people teeping in, but they don't have the Ignis factors. Roger over here, he has his big tag, but it's sitting in the stash. And now they know there's no mana over on no one. They're teeping in the Omni Slash on the back line. It's on top of the Nyx Assassin, and they do actually have a bit of vision, so the Omni Slash continues. But over here, the Echo Sam, they're probably going to lose Crystallize, but he tries to get a killing return, and he does actually kill off the Earthshaker. Blizzy roars just for the, hit the side of Navi to be able to retreat. Solo, is he able to get any sort of glimpse play? He does have it, and he pulls right back Blizzy. Blizzy, he's going to be the sacrifice for the slice of his steering chains. The Impale, they have this nice channel, the Meteor Hammer, and it connects the Static Storm. They're able to walk out of it because the Kinetic Field, not just in time, but Pasha with this medallion, he's hitting very hard, and Zyax isn't going to be able to waddle away to safety. They don't have the vision. Pasha goes the wrong direction. Now the pings do come out, and they get the glimpse. So that's going to be another kill over on Zyax. Zyax, he does get the spike characters off, but they wait for it to fade. Pasha, one more hit. Actually, Roger, with that Fisher, able to get the kill. The three what a scrappy fight. Three really big kills for the side of VP. Oh. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Trying to go on the Dusa next to the shrine is a questionable decision. Because even though she doesn't have that many items yet, she's still one of the tankiest heroes in the game right now. Yeah, I was very surprised they committed further once she got off Stone Gaze. I understand if she hadn't got off that spell, but uh, going for it after, uh, and they. You get punished for it for the side of Navi. It was quite a decent shot if they got off more ticks of the Ignis Fathers, but the uh, Jug just instantly used his spin and attack. just got rid of it before it could take a second time. Magical. magical being He's super being aggressive, aggressive in the jungle again. They don't connect with the Fisher, and they realize they don't even need to TP in the Nation's Prophet. He's free to do whatever he wants to do on this bottom lane. Crystallize, find some nice farm.
So, no one, he is doing pretty well on this Medusa, especially now that he has the Manta style, he should be that little bit more survivable. I like the fact that they are finding these Hawks solo, being very careful not to let the side of Na'Vi have this vision. But Na'Vi, they've gone into the Roche Pit once again. There is an echo in 25 seconds, but by that point, Roche should go down. And it doesn't look like VP has any idea because they don't have vision here. They only just placed the Void. Yeah, and it would be a blink echo. The Radiant, they're sending out Hawks. They already have vision here. They're using the scan. And it looks like this is going to be a, nut, a Roche for the side of Na'Vi. Very nice call by Na'Vi. Going for that after committing the gold strength for the ancient stack. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, the blink tagger for Roger is up. So they'll be looking for a big epicenter. Uh, sorry. Echo Slam Reveal. I do know the names of spells sometimes. It's been a long day. So Nico doesn't really have any items yet, but Zayats, as you said, does have this Meteor Hammer. And you spoke about this last game, but it is going to help his farming by quite a bit too. Just being able to clear those creep waves with a single item. Yeah, th the only time I think I ever built a Meteor Hammer was when I was uh, playing Tree and Protector. So you, you just have the fun thing of... You know, sitting along the trees, clearing wave after wave after wave. I miss Trion sometimes. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure PPD does as well. But Soneko, he's probably overextended here. They have the glimpse back as well as the sprout. Even committing the obvious slash from the juggernaut. Just wanting to secure that quick kill. I just want to emphasize how I really like um, the fact that Seneko always picks up a Quelling Blade on his supports. Just making sure that he can get those D-words a little bit quicker. Sadly enough, he still gets punished right now, but that's only because VP has a profit, so that's kind of cheating. Medusa, they get the roll, but not before she gets off the ultimate, and that's going to be leave enough time for the side of VP to be able to come to their Medusa's aid. Roger, he has the blink, he goes forward, he gets the Fisher, and it looks like Blizzy will go down, but Krista is right here on top of him, so there's no Echo Slam, and are oh, they going to be able to look for more? No one, he's running away very fast, but Krista has one more stun, so no one, he might lose all of his mana. Magical on the back lines, they're held there, but they do have the Static Storm. Doesn't really matter, they have the Impale, and they are losing this Medusa, controlled by the Meteor Hammer. Now Pasha, they glimpse back on top of Magical, but he just puts the Remnant down, so he's able to chase him forward. It doesn't matter about your trees, because they're able to take them down. They've lost Solo, and they've lost four. A great fight for the side of Na'Vi. And there we have the aggression we spoke about, and I'm starting to get more and more worried for VP, because they aren't really finding the kills with the Earthshaker, and both Jug and... Dosa, they want to keep fighting, but they can't really find the space. Yeah, Na'Vi, it feels sometimes like they're playing over-aggressive, but it's really actually tempered to just the right amount. They're shutting down the space where this Medusa can farm, and when they see her on the map, they realize she is killable for them at this point in the game. And Crystallize has his BKB now, so pretty much the only thing that can stop him at this stage is Stone Gaze. And they've been doing a pretty good job forcing it out and then going back. Uh, they have Roar off cooldown. They're sitting behind the Magical Ember Spirit. Maybe hoping for the side of EP to initiate. There is no only Slash yet on the Jug. So they could try to take a fight. But it's kind of risky going into Stone Gaze and Echo Slam under a tower as well. So probably best for uh, Na'Vi to lay low for now. They're controlling this area, hoping someone from the side of EP to walk up this high ground. But they just, they have this sixth sense. This is what's so great about these high level teams. They always seem to know the kinetic field doesn't catch, but they will have glimpse if they want to use it to catch one of these heroes. Very funny bait by Roger, pretending he didn't see Zayat, but blinking away the moment the impale came out. Very risky, but very cheeky play. Well, smoke from VP. Yeah, they're baiting with their two carries in front. Crystallize, he's gone from ta one tower and looks like he wants to rotate into this mid lane. But as you said, the smoke here, they're on the back lines. The Godzik, and they're on top of the Medusa. Do they have the follow-up? They have the Ignis Batter, and there's no mana remaining. They even use the Raw to bring down this Medusa, I think. They need to do a bit more damage. Taking down Ramses, they're chasing no one now, no one. No mana left, they need a few more hits coming out from Crystallize. But Roger has the stun, and now there's no BKB. The Echo Slam there. As well as the Omni Slash, they've taken down two. And Magical, he has no mana remaining. And he's probably going to be the next casualty. He's not able to leap away to that, but he does have the Aegis. He's bottled himself a haste room. It looks like Seneko's the one they want. He's fighting up against the Medusa, but he's not able to do it. Partial TP in. He's going to find 
The Nako and Magical is going to be the only one that's okay here. As well as the Blizzy Beastmaster, but Magical, he's probably going to lose this Aegis. He does have the Haste Rune, and he will be able to get away. That was the greediest play I've seen in a long time. Bursting no one up to the point where he had no mana and then ignoring him and trying to go for Ramses? They tried to kill both and as a result they killed Nido. That was so incredibly greedy, I can't believe it. Yeah, Ramses, he, there was a really nice Echo Slam on two heroes and with the Omni Slash on top of it, it was just more than enough damage. Ooh, that feels uh, pretty bad, as you can uh, as you can tell from the chat lines. You, you, you know how they're feeling. Yep, getting outplayed by a thirty-six damage tree and feels bad, man. <laughs> so crystallize. He has his BKB. We did see it in the last fight. But Navi, I, I do like what they're doing here. They're, even though they took a bad fight, they're not too discouraged. And they're still looking for more because they realize they can't let VP take this to the extremely late game. Yeah, and this Fen is still super strong. He just needs to make sure that they can chain the initiations on a single target. Yeah, so they're baiting Magical in this mid lane. They do show that Blizzy's here with the help of his boars. So that is going to be the final tier 2 tower. Asha is putting Dyer's up some decent split push here in this bottom fallen. lane, but it's not quite enough to claim a tower in trade. Zayat once again on the hunt. Last game he found the Nagi in the trees. Let's see if he can do the same with the Prophet. Doesn't look like it for now. Yeah, unfortunately, Pasha's Prophet just Radiant seems that tiny bit more slippery than the Slitheen. Looks like VP wants to go for a smoke once again. If they could find a hero, that could alleviate a lot of the pressure. Ramses, he has his Omni Slash. They have the Echo in six seconds. Will they find anyone? Looks like they're gonna find Blizzy, but this may be more than they bargained for. Blizzy, he has the roar. He uses it on the Juggernaut as soon as his spin is ending. They pull Blizzy back. They have the Ignis Battles. Do they have enough to burst the Juggernaut? Yes, they do. He's not able to get out the Omni Slash. And the Stone Gaze, it has turned the Sven to Stone. But they have the Ignis Battles here as well. And it's bringing in the Medusa. And now, Chris Ice, he's no longer turned to Stone. There's no mana left. And Magical on the backline. They've lost the Medusa. They're looking for more Magical. He's chased forward. Roger, you're not going to be able to get away from this. Even though you stun him up, you are affected by the Flame Guard as well as the Force. They've lost Roger. And so no, he's here at the trees. Do they have any idea where he is? The hawk is actually going to provide the vision, but not quite there with the slice of fist. And it doesn't look like no one has buyback. This could be damage to tier threes. Actually, the creep wave is really far away, and there is still a catapult. Uh, but they That's do happy. have. That's, they, uh... <laughs> they have the boar dealing with the catapult, though, so it will be there eventually. I love how Crystallize just face tanked the Deuce ulti. He was like, alright, I'll be stunned for two seconds, but what are you gonna do when I get out of it? And the answer was nothing. So when this Earthshaker comes back to the world of living, it does have a big Echo Slam. So I think after this tier 3, that's when you have to back because of the Shaker. Now they can just take the shrines and then they can set up for a Roche. So it's looking very good for Navi right now. Yeah, we have an AC almost finished on Sven as well. They're working towards a Lincoln Sphere on Embo. And the Beastmaster has a, a Solo Crest and is working towards a Crimson Guide. So, big items on the horizon for Navi. Yeah, Speaking it's... about big items, no one <laughs> does almost have a butterfly. So, I mean, Crystallize, he obviously doesn't mind building MKB. He has it queued up. Do you think he might just go for the casual hyperstone into the uh, into the MKB as soon as he sees this full bot fly? Well, judging by the contents of the Radiant Courier, I would say no. <laughs> Fair enough. That is a uh, that is something I didn't quite check out, and uh, I see the rest of the AC right there. Oh, is he? Um, he isn't that fine. He's actually struggling a lot in this game. 27 minutes and just 9.5k net worth. He's just been getting burst at every single fight. Yeah, I really like what they did because they they used the raw just as the spin was ending. That they definitely have enough time for the follow-up stunts to come in. When you get out farmed or when the enemy position 4 is on fire with your carry, it feels really bad. Then again, Zayat. He's been doing a great job on this Nyx last game, but especially this game. 
He has a Yules, he has a Media Hammer, and he almost has an Agonims at 27 minutes. That's oh. the bloody dream on Nyx. I, I think he's been patient enough. He sees Pasha. This is probably going to result in a kill. They're all coming over to this. He doesn't have his Vendetta, so he's not able to stay right on top of him, but the mana burn. That's, he's caught in the trees. He goes for the Impale. He does oh, miss, he but he has the Yules. Oh, he didn't have the vision. Oh, I think he was a tiny bit greedy there because his team weren't quite in position. This is what happens when I start praising people. I should just start flaming people. <laughs> Do not start flaming people. We don't want a, a tea time episode here on this stream. We've done so well so far. <laughs> but uh, VP, they did go for a smoke of their own. Ramsey's this defusal seems to be... Uh, his big item, the smoke, it has ended, but on top of the Medusa is where they want to be. They miss with the Impale. Dyak, they, they see where he is, they pull him back, but Crystallize, he's almost managed to burst him. He did pop his BKB, so the Fisher's able to interrupt it, but they have the counter initiation, so they didn't have the instant follow up of the Echo Slam. Meanwhile, on this back line, they have lost Ramses before he's able to get out his ultimate, and chasing forward here is magical. No one that doesn't actually have enough mana for his ultimate, so it doesn't matter. They're more than happy to fight inside the static storm. That's three dead from the side of VP. Ramses is just such a non-factor in these fights. He can't even get off his Omni Slash. He just keeps dying to this massive Sven. Yeah, I guess the size of the sword does matter after all. <laughs> Soneko, I, I, I really have to praise his play as well, but I think they're going to be able to kill off this Nature's Prophet. They have so much change disabled. This Impale into the Beast Hammer, and now Blizzy's on top of him. They're looking for Solo. And... Is he angling for a good Echo Slam? Roger, he just made his way back to the base and he's not in position for any of this. They've already lost one lane of Rax. They have no tier twos remaining. This is definitely going to be two lanes of Rax, if not Mega Creeps, I think. They cannot fight without the Dusa. They need to wait, but she doesn't have buyback, so it's another 20 seconds. And Navi should just be able to take another set of Rax here. And Roche is up too. Oh, magical. He, I didn't realize, but he has a Lincoln Sphere of his own, so they're not able to use the Thunder not able to use Glimpse, and he just retreats away from Ramses. He was just zoning back the entire side of VP, while meanwhile Crystallize cleared up these racks. Yep, and now they can just take the Shrine, then move into Roche. It looks very bad if you're a VP fan right now. They do have this Dusa, but she just isn't able to really right click in these fights. She spends most of her time trying to run away and survive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crystallized on the, on this event. He, you said in the draft, he's the counter to the, to the Juggernaut. And we're seeing it again and again just because of how far ahead he is. He's able to burst him before he's really able to do anything. And the counter initiation also from Seneco's will wisp it meant there was no Echo Slam from this Earthshaker. So they didn't have the chain disable on top of crystallize. Yeah, I have to give a ton of credit to this Keeper of the Light. These will wisps have been fight-saving for Navi. Dyer are scared. Uh, Zayak, he's very close to his Aghanim Scepter. He's only about 100 gold away from it now. And I love his positioning too. He's being so aggressive. But he knows that there is no detection because Solo is so poor. Yeah, it's, uh, just going against an Invis hero like this, it just keeps your 5 position down in the dirt. Doesn't look like Navi is quite willing to go for the Roche. They are respecting this Static Storm into Echo Slam. Zayats does have his gold now for the Aghanim Scepter if he wants to go for it. I think he might look to get a pick off. They see no one. There is Ooh. detection here for him. But the side of EP just running away, knowing that people's behind him, but they have the smoke up. Now everything's revealed. This uh, Searing Chains, they didn't actually connect over here. They popped the God Strike. Who are they looking for over here? They have the Omni Slash, but it doesn't really matter. Crystallize, he's more than happy to tag this. They have the will -Wist. One hit kills off Solo. Over here, the Stone Gaze on the back line. They've been able to kill off Roger. Crystallize, he has no mana remaining. He's turned to stone, but it doesn't really matter. VP, they actually call GG because they realize they're going to be able to chase. They just burst the Medusa. She's not the tanky hero that you usually expect. And we're going to a game five. My goodness, I feel like we're seeing signs of the Navi we saw earlier in the qualifiers that actually beat VP because it looks like